Hi, I'm going to demonstrate installing Oracle 11G Release 2 Real Application Clusters in Virtual Machines, um, specifically three nodes of VMware Fusion on a MacBook Pro. So here is the MacBook Pro running 10.5.8 OS 10, which is just Leopard, um, 2.5 gigahertz dual core CPU, 4 gigs of memory. So that is correct. Four nodes. Now hopefully I don't have very many difficulties with this uh, recording. All right. Um, I have not actually mounted the media yet, so let's just do that. Oops. Wrong. Perfect. And actually, I need to reconnect with X for you. Okay, so what I have is staged software for grid infrastructure. I'm just learning how to type. Grid infrastructure is clusterware, ASM listener, and a few other little bits that really don't belong with database. Um, now listener does kind of belong with database, but it doesn't. So we're going to install a grid infrastructure first, and uh, this is a welcome change with 11GR2. Some people say it's merely cosmetic, but I'd say it's uh, more than cosmetic because it really helps to underscore the purpose of these components, that it is a separate component. We're going to install and configure grid infrastructure for a cluster, not just install the software. Now, in a more advanced configuration, you would select this. However, I'm going to do this for now. Okay. There will be subsequent videos in the future where I demonstrate more advanced installations and uh, different techniques that can be used to work within your rack environment, but uh, right now we just want to get a working cluster of three nodes. Now for some reason this always takes a little bit of time. I'm not exactly sure what it's doing. Um, could always view the install actions log tail dash effort. Anyhow, we're going to do an advanced installation because we want to specify a number of options. Yes, we want only English. Give the name for a cluster. So let's just say cluster 1 and give it a scan IP. In this case, I'm going to call it Scan Virtual IP, which actually, uh, that's the full name right there, scanvip.example.com. All right. For more information on what these things mean, uh, I will be writing up a tutorial that helps to explain much of these decisions that we're making. Okay, but for now, I just want to put together a video that demonstrates how all this works and that it does work there's a lot of skeptics out there who believe that VMware makes it pretty much impossible to run a decent rack. Now of course this is not for production, however um, it is very possible to run a very performant environment for testing purposes. Now three nodes is pretty excessive on a laptop and actually four nodes is even more excessive and that's what the next video will demonstrate is adding a fourth node to an existing three node cluster. Stay tuned. So here we are, we're just testing the uh, interfaces, we're doing some SSHs around to make sure that we have user equivalency. Oops, you should probably pay attention. I want that to be private. Okay. Interrupted by the janitor. ASM is where we're going to place our OCR and our voting disks. This is a new feature of 11GR2 that's very welcome, and again, the architecture of this and details of which will be in the written details. So, ASM, uh, we need to configure at least one disk group, <coughs> and in this case, we are going to add SDC, SDD, SDE, and SDF into a single disk group known as data. Best practice would dictate that we would actually create an FRA as a separate disk group, but in this case, we're just going to create a big disk group of roughly 32 gigs in space. 
um, no redundancy. Let's provide a password for sys and ASM SNMP for the ASM instances. Complains that uh, this doesn't meet recommended standards, but that's fine. We are not going to configure IPMI as we do not have a BMC or IPMI uh, drivers installed. This is VMware after all. These are the groups. And I just want to emphasize that these locations are not coming from any environment variables. These are the recommended locations Oracle Universal Installer is making when we haven't specified any other location. So notice that this is not in our base. Our base is U01 app Oracle, but this is a separate directory outside of our base. This helps to underscore the idea that this directory should be should contain software that's maintained by the root user more so than say the regular OS user Oracle. So we are now just checking to make sure that we have enough space and that we have the permissions to actually install into these locations on the other nodes. This could take some time depending on how many nodes you're verifying. In our case, two other nodes. The first Oracle product to be installed on this node and the other nodes will require an inventory location. This is where we will put it. Again, it is outside of the base. This is recommended. A lot of people don't know this. Now, we're going to check the prerequisites and hopefully everything has been done properly on all three nodes. We actually do check all three nodes, so the Oracle Universal Installer has gotten pretty intelligent. And uh, we do so in parallel too, so if you check the install actions, you'll actually see this stuff going on. I am not going to tail these files off in this video because I want to keep my videos simple. For those of you who are starting off with Rack, Later on, um, there may be some more detailed videos where I illustrate techniques that I use in the field when I'm doing my installs to ensure that I actually know what's happening. This probably represents the 100th 11G R2 rack installation I've done, and I am not exaggerating. Today is September 22nd, 2009. So, uh, I really am not exaggerating. This is how I get such a clean install. So we we'll click finish and we wait. Okay, so now we are ready to run the root scripts. So let's just do this. Okay, so that was that. And now for I one, two, three, do SSH. Before I do that, echo doing node VX a dollar I. So the idea behind this is just to kind of give us the ability to start this off and then walk away. Let me just check the scroll back on this thing. Unlimited. That works. And uh, notice I'm redirecting dev null into the script, which will basically whack the enter key for me. And that should do it. Let's just make sure that this is all correct. All right, looks good. Um, just want to verify because the last thing you want to do is kick off and automate a, a, a mistake. So there we go. And again, I'm going to step aside. OK, looks like um, all the root scripts have run successfully on all three nodes. Very nice. And now we go over here and click OK. Okay. 